Okay. Well, very, very good. Uh, it's really uh, great to have Greg and Judy with us. We were in France with them and spent several days with them and uh, uh, were there to minister alongside of them and, and just uh, to appreciate the work that they put into in, in a difficult field because you don't get results right away. And uh, you lay the foundation and you work on it. And I remember I was talking with them because one of the great things about uh, the thing was uh, the French bread. And that uh, we would go down uh, about three stores down on the street there and uh, get uh, pan. And we would have uh, French bread for breakfast with coffee. Very, very good. And, uh, and after so many years, they have worked. And the lady who is uh, there at the bakery now is coming to a Bible study. And so through uh, the process of, of going there and, and, and just being a testimony for so many years and then uh, opening up uh, to share the gospel with them. And it's, it's uh, really, really unique. So Greg, uh, this is Greg and Judy Sermons. And so Greg, come on up. And uh, just share with us what God has laid on your heart this morning. Thank you very much. We do appreciate this church. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when Judy and I got married 35 years ago, we got married in Kansas City, went on a, like a three-day honeymoon, and then we got in our car and drove down here. You were the first church we visited as Mr. and Mrs. Sermons. That's cool. <clears throat> 35 years ago. So we praise the, the Lord for, for your part in our ministry over all these years. <clears throat> I'd, like to <clears throat> I'd like to go through a, my PowerPoint presentation and share with you some of the things going on and ask you to pray for the work in Lille, France, in North France. Uh, we are Greg and Judy Sermons. Uh, you can, uh, you wanna put it on, please? <coughs> okay, there it is. Um, oh, <coughs> next, please. Uh, this is uh, Rebecca in the center, and uh, Sam, her husband, and the, our five grandkids. Next, please. And then in December, we had our number six, our sixth grandchild, Lucien, he was born December 15th. Judy and I went down to Toulouse, 600 miles south of us, to be with them for Christmas. And we saw the newborn. Next, please. But unfortunately, this little one uh, left us with SIDS uh, in uh, uh, February. <clears throat> but uh, the Lord knows, you know, the Lord teaches and sometimes trials um, open up doors to witness and share the faith. And sometimes God uses it to, in our own lives. And we, we praise God for that. So Judy and I went down again for the, to be with them for the funeral. And I got up on a ladder and fell and broke my shoulder. But uh, even again, God is good and we trust him. Next, please. <clears throat> our son, Nathaniel, he, his ambition is to be his own boss. He wanted to start a business, saved up his money, uh, did all the paperwork and got more complicated. He thought he got discouraged. and used up his money, now he's come home. But uh, pray that even this, that God will use this in his life to, to bring him into a closer walk with, with Christ. Next. Now, this is France, <clears throat> and Leo is up in the center on the top. Uh, and then we have right south of us, Paris. Toulouse, where our daughter and son-in-law is down here in the south of France. Next, please. <clears throat> when you think of France, most of you think of the Eiffel Tower. You think of Paris. Next, please. But what we want you to think of is not Paris, not the Eiffel Tower, not the Ark of Triumph. We want you to think of 65 plus million people, most of them without Christ. 0.63% call themselves evangelical. That's everything from your Pentecostal to your Baptist and everybody in between. And there's over 400,000 evangelical Christians in France, but that's only one evangelical church for every 30,000 people. Now, I round off the figures a little bit to try to help you understand, but approximately one third of the French population call themselves atheists. They do not believe that God exists. Approximately one third call themselves agnostic. Oh, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. And approximately one third say they believe there is a God. These are approximate figures. But that one third that believe that there is a God, you've got your, 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 your Muslims, you've got your Jehovah's Witnesses and your Mormons and your, the practicing Catholics and some of the Protestants and the Evangelicals and some others. That doesn't mean they're all born again believers and on the way to heaven. Next, please. <clears throat> We're in North France. Lille, again, being here. We have Belgium, 
Holland, the English Channel, and England, and the parish right south of us, Lille, is centrally located. As far as in that area, we, we can be in London in two and a half hours on the fast train. We can be in Brussels in an hour, Paris an hour on, on the train. Uh, it's sort of a centrally located uh, um, location. Next, please. Next. Now, this is the map of around Lille. Now, I know you can't see anything, but I want you to notice it's a lot of names. Lille is a metropolitan area of over a million people with about 80,000 university students. Next, please. Now, our church is here. It comes to the street. This is the Holy Calva, and this is um, uh, the Presbytery for the Catholic Church over behind us. Now, I don't agree with Calvin on a number of things, but sometimes I jokingly say, what separates us from them is Calvin. He did, he did have a, a large part in French history. Next, please. Uh, so the church, uh, on the ground floor we have our church, church hall, and then on the second and third floor, we, Judy and I have our apartment. Next, please. This is the old stock exchange. If you notice, it's very decorative. This is the Flemish influence. Under Louis XIV, Lille became French, and one of the conditions was the, ki the king of France had to be Catholic. Next, please. Uh, this is the bell tower, which is also Flemish, but right next to it, you have the opera, which is the Parisian the Paris uh, influence. And so France became, uh, Lille became very French afterwards. Next please. It's also it's a modern city. It's a city that has a lot of commerce, a lot of mail order type uh, um, uh, catalog type uh, sales and so forth. Next please. Kathy, she worked with us for seven years. And last summer the Lord led her to return to South France where she's from. I'll put this a picture in here to ask you to pray that God would send forth laborers into the harvest. Next. The first weekend in September in Lille, uh, we have La Braderie. Now, La Braderie is a flea market. It's, this is the largest flea market in Europe. They, they block off all the streets downtown, and we have hundreds of miles of th people selling things on the street. So we set up a table with Bibles, Christian literature, give out tracts, Try to witness and share the gospel with those that come by. Next, please. Mark Goslin, he's from Ohio, and uh, he was a pastor for 15 years. And the Lord led him to a ministry of French-speaking peoples, whether it be in France or in Africa. And uh, so we were instrumental in helping him get to France, learn French, and so forth. Next, please. He's replacing us while we're here in the States right now. At Christmas time, we organized a Christmas program. When you get the kids involved, sometimes you'll get the grandparents, you get the neighbors, you get some people that never come to church, church otherwise. The idea is to share the gospel. Next. And then we also have a New Year's uh, meal. It's also an opportunity to invite people to come and, and sit down and, and, and share a time where we'll be able to share the gospel also. Next, please. Uh, we have about, right now our church has grown, we're excited, we have about 30 adults and about 20 kids. So we have three uh, Sunday school uh, classes, the, the toddlers, this group, and then an older group. And Judy takes care of organizing who does what and so forth. Next, please. Around this Bible study, on this table we do a Bible study. And uh, I do it on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday night, the same Bible study twice because people can't come to each one. And then on the second and fourth Sunday afternoons, we do a Bible study at three o'clock. So, so some of the people, they bring things to church, to, uh, for the church service, we eat together, and then, then, we have, then we have a Bible study. Next, please. I've been videotaping a lot of my Bible studies and uh, preaching. You can find that on Vimeo. Of course, it's in French. Combien parle français? Il y a francophone ici? How many speak French? Anybody? Anyway, but if you speak French, go to Vimeo. Uh, and you can uh, uh, f uh, follow the Bible studies, over 180 of them. Judy does a ladies' Bible study. This is a, the study that this bakery lady is now coming to once a month. And uh, Judy has about 15 ladies that come. And some of them have trusted Christ by coming to the Bible study. Next. Preaching and teaching is central in, in, uh, in, in the work because this is what we're there for is to get the Word of God out. Next. Uh, the, on our church, uh, uh, church service, this is what our church hall looks like. Um, we could probably get about 100 people into our church hall. And right now, it's uh, like I said, about 30 adults, about 20 kids. But pray that we'll be able to see more people come to Christ again. We have a small Christian bookstore in the front part of our, of our building, open three days a week. 
And uh, it's up, we don't have many people to come in, but every now and then somebody comes in, we're able to share uh, uh, the gospel with them, give them a track, talk to them, give them sometimes a, a gospel of John or whatever. Next. Last time we were in the States, three years ago, we had this idea of creating a Christian film for Christmas. And uh, the Lord led a young man from, that lives in Pennsylvania that uh, his mother had been a missionary in France many years ago. Uh, he, he came and worked with us and became our producer. Next, so we invented a story of a, a, of a little boy that asked what's the, the manger scene about and his father um, asked this Christian where, where it is in the Bible and, um, and afterwards the Christian starts witnessing to this, this, this man and, and the man uh, tr comes to Christ. You can find it on YouTube, plus que cela. If you add the word Noel afterwards, you're sure to get it. Plus que cela means more than that and Noel's Christmas. Next, please. We've had six baptisms. We've got pictures of five of them. This is Jacqueline. She's from Cameroon. And uh, uh, she, she wanted to study the Bible. So she found our Bible Institute and came to see us for the Bible Institute. And it wasn't the Bible Institute, it was, it was for her, but our Bible studies. And we praise God, she's really grown in the Lord. And we saw her be baptized. Rav, he, he's from Madagascar. His sister and brother-in-law are part of our church. And uh, he said he would never go to their church before he came to study in France and living with Nisa and Jenny. But when he came, first time he was there, he didn't want to stay by himself, so he came to church and he heard the gospel, and over time he trusted Christ again. Uh, Corentin, a guy from the neighborhood, we had a contact with him and uh, started sharing with him, and he came to Christ, and he wanted to be baptized not in our baptistry. That's not real. I mean, that's not. He wanted, he wanted to do it in the English Channel. It had to be January. Um, <laughs> And the water in the English Channel never is warm, I hate to tell you, it's, it's the North Sea. And, uh, but anyway, but there's a youth worker that had led him to Christ, actually, uh, and he said he wanted him to do the baptism. Praise God, go to it. <laughs> Next, please. Adelaide, her mother uh, trusted Christ, and, uh, uh, and this Christian that led her mother to Christ uh, suggested that she come to the States for a summer. She did, she, and he arranged for her to stay with the Christian family. And during those two months, she trusted Christ. Coming back to France, she studied in Lille. And we praise God, we saw her grow in the Lord and accept baptism. Next. Dominique has the guy's problem with depression and other problems. And uh, uh, he started coming to our bookstore, opened the Bible, started sharing with him. And he's, he's understood the gospel and enjoyed baptizing him. Uh, next. Uh, Francois is one of our deacons. His wife is from Brazil, but he's French. Next. Uh, Nielsen and Jenny, they're from Madagascar. Ni Jenny is Rav's sister, and Nielsen's one of our deacons. Next, well, they invited us to come to go with them last summer to Madagascar, and that was a, an experience to us. Madagascar is a v v beautiful country, but very poor. And uh, next, please. <clears throat> we were able to share the gospel. I was able to have an opportunity to preach the gospel to uh, on several occasions. This was one evening, they, they had these loudspeakers and this village and <clears throat> people started coming and uh, I, I shared the gospel. And there was also an another evening with Mark Gosselin and another evening with a local pastor. But I'll be able to teach the Word of God and be able to uh, bring people to um, help them to go farther in their Christian faith. Next. Uh, but uh, the night I preached at that, e that, that evening meeting, Hujo, meeting, uh, which is another one of Jenny's brothers and, and Rahav's brothers. And uh, he came, and as I was explaining the gospel, he was understanding. And uh, praise God, he prayed with Judy a couple of days later to trust Christ. Next, please. This is a group we traveled together. Uh, we had two vehicles. Next, please. One of them was this four-wheel vehicle that, that uh, Nielsen had shipped from Belgium to Madagascar. And uh, the roads here are very bad. I mean, they are, they call them roads, but this one was paved. This was a major highway, but it was full of potholes and someplace washed out. But um, on the way from the capital, uh, Antanarivo, and Majunga, the city where we, 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 we stayed most of the time on the coast, there's about 300 miles. It took us over 12 hours to do that. But on the way, you would have these gendarmes, these policemen that would stop you and want to check your papers. If they found something, they want to be paid. It's put it in their pocket. It's not, it's not a regular... Uh, you know, uh, ticket. And uh, we got stopped four or five times. Everything was in order, no problem. But then on our way back from Majunga to the capital, Nissan discovered the temporary papers from Belgium had expired. Oh, Lord, sit to play. Lord, please. 
and we prayed. And I counted 15 of those barriers of the police, and they didn't stop us once. But praise God. Next, please. We, we visit the Baptist Theological Seminary. They're teaching and training uh, men to be pastors. You might pray for them. Next. And we also visit with a group of pastors and their wives. And it, it was rich to see their love for the Lord. They don't have much materially, but spiritually they're, they're very rich. Next. We also discovered the zebu. It's kind of like a cow with a hump on the back, and uh, they pull their carts. You come along that four-wheel drive vehicle at night, and they don't, you come upon one of these things, and they don't have lights on the back. You have to watch out. But they also eat the meat. It's better than beef. I tell you, it's really good. Next, please. Back to France with our Bible Institute. We have an Apollos program. It's a one-year program where a young person can study the Bible and be involved in group evangelism. And uh, next, please. But what Judy and I are personally more involved with is the distance learning program that we have. We have uh, the classes on video. We have about 20 men enrolled right now. Um, all of them aren't necessarily advancing. But, uh, and then, then we'd like to start a program alternating between the practical and the theory. Next, please. Some of the men that, that, that are they're enrolled in our Bible Institute, they come three times to Lille during the year. All of them don't come each time but we're able to give them some classes and they can see each other and take some tests and so forth. Next. Uh, but we organize this using Skype. So Tim Knickerbocker, who is in the center of France, Judy and I in North France, and then Dominique Michaud, who is in Canada, uh, we get together most Monday nights on Skype and organize what we're doing for the Bible Institute, who needs to do what. Next. But Tim, um, he came to France right after Judy did uh, 44 years ago. And we've known him for many years. So we work together with the Bible Institute. Next. And uh, his main ministry is a camp ministry. If you'd like to come to France and spend a summer working in a camp, uh, he has something that, that would really be interesting for you. Next, please. Uh, but pray for our, our work. Pray for our church. Pray that God will add to our numbers. Next, please. We are with Global Faith Mission Agency out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Next. Uh, we've been sharing our prayer requests mainly on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, ask to be one of our friends. And uh, you can, when something comes up, it's like, this weekend we're having such and such. Uh, pray for us. Also, I have a blog at sermons.info. Ask for one of our prayer cards where you can get our email address and, and so forth. This is the way I see France. I don't know where this picture was taken. I found it on the Internet. But large and spacious the way that leads to, to hell, to eternal damnation. And narrow is the way that leads to, to heaven. It's Jesus Christ. And uh, I look at the French people, and I can just imagine them on this highway, on the way to eternity without Christ. I pray that, Lord, help us to get just a few of these people on the narrow and straight way, which is Christ, by faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you. <clears throat> Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, God chooses to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The preaching of the cross is foolishness. When we start talking to those humanists, atheists, agnostics in France, and we start talking about Jesus Christ that died on the cross, they look at us like we're coming from Mars. It's foolishness. You know, man f believes that if, we're, if there is a heaven then surely we must do something to get to heaven. And they'll say you have to do good, you have to do this, do that. But the Bible tells us it's by grace we're saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. To the human logic, it's not logical that an almighty, all-powerful, holy and just God would offer salvation as a free gift. It's foolishness to the world. But to those of us who have trusted Jesus Christ, it is the power of God that changes everything. We're on, we're on the road to heaven. 
We have a relationship with God. We're able to pray. He, he, his Holy Spirit indwells us and, and wants to bring us to, to walk with, with Christ. But to the world, it's foolishness. But God, His wisdom is so much greater than the wisdom of men. Verses 20 and 21, For where is the wise? For where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost. Again, God's wisdom, God's way of doing things is the only right way. Now, understand, God's thoughts are, are far from our thoughts. And, and we hear here that God wants to use the preaching of the gospel, but how can they believe if somebody doesn't preach? And how can they preach unless someone be sent? Romans chapter 10 tells us. And God chooses the foolish things of this world to boulevards, to turn upside down the wisdom of this world. And you know, maybe you're here today and you say, I'm not really somebody, but that's the kind of person God wants to use. Maybe you're, you're saying, well, I can't speak. That's the kind of person God wants to use. Maybe you're here you're saying, I, I, I don't have any, any, I can't sing. Well, I can't either. I sing like a Donald Duck. I mean, I can't sing. Why? But you know, God wants to use you and me because it's foolish to use human beings to preach the gospel. I don't, if I had been God, I would have used the angels. I mean, I would have sent the angels to, and I would have written it on the clouds. John 3, 16, to appear every morning on the, on the clouds. But God doesn't do that way. God wants to use you and me. We are to be, uh, you might say, um, a sample of what God could do. And we should open our mouths and, and share the gospel. But the world, the entire world needs this gospel. Well, that's foolishness to the world. Verses 22, we read, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. There are those that say, I, I want to see fire come down from heaven. How, how many of you have heard people say, I would believe if, if this or that? You know, at the time of Jesus, when Jesus was here on earth, he raised the dead. He opened the eyes of the blind. He healed the lame. He fed thousands with a couple of fish and a couple of uh, pain. It's not pain, it's pain. Uh, I say bread in French. For the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek, seek after wisdom. There's others that it's, they want you know, wise philosophical arguments. Sometimes we waste our time with wise philosophical arguments. Present the gospel. For we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. And I tell you, when we preach the gospel in France, most of the people think we are fools. Let's be fools for Christ. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. When you come to Christ you discover a whole new world. A whole new world that is, the world can't see. They're blinded by the God of this earth. The God of this world has blinded them that perish. And we are to be lights in this world. We are to be sharing the gospel. But Jew or Greek, whether somebody wants a sign or wants philosophical arguments, it's the gospel, the answer. In verse 25 we read, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, that how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and the things which are despised. Hath God chosen, yea, things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. God chooses the foolish things 
in order to show his power, to show who he is. God, he chooses those the world would reject in order to show how great he is. You know, in the Old Testament, Balaam was going to go curse the people of God and God spoke to him. How? It's the mouth of what? A donkey. If God can use a donkey, he can use you and I. He can. Let me give you a little personal testimony. Uh, how many of you know what dyslexia is? Let me tell you, 50-something years ago, people didn't know what dyslexia was. And I got to kindergarten, first grade, and I couldn't learn to read. My first grade teacher said, told my mom, your son is slow. Because she couldn't teach me to read. And I started stuttering. Pressure. And then my mom, she said, my son isn't slow. She took me to get some testing at the University of Georgia. My mom is somebody that, when she's got a problem, she goes to it. And uh, praise God for that. And the University of Georgia said, uh, your son will never finish college. I did. Your son will never play a musical instrument. I don't play very well, but I play the French horn. And he'll never learn a foreign language. This is what the, the experts 50-something years ago said. Well, God had other ideas. God had other ideas. And I, I stuttered until I went to France and learned French. When I learned French, I had to stop and think of every word. And when I started learning French, I stopped stuttering. You know, I'm sure that the world wouldn't have sent somebody like me to be the spokesman for a company, as to say, a company to sell something. But God chooses the foolish things of the world in order to confound the wise. Brothers and sisters, if you're here today and God calls you to serve him in a particular way, don't say God can't do it because he can and he will if you let him. If you'll answer his call to serve him. The world needs missionaries. And France is just one little part of it. The world needs men and women to raise up and to be willing to go to the uttermost parts of the earth and to preach the gospel. You will be witness to me in Jerusalem and in Samaria in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, I like, particularly when he talks about Samaria, because Samaria, do you know who the Samaritans were? The Samaritans were, uh, they were peoples, that, uh, pagans that had been brought into the land of Israel, and things weren't going so well, so they brought the Levites back, and they taught them the law of Moses, and they made a mixture between the law of Moses and their paganism. And then when the Jews came back, these Samaritans were there. And the Samaritans didn't like the Jews, and the Jews didn't like the Samaritans. They hated each other. It was racism. And when the Bible says, you will be witnesses to me in Samaria, I believe he's talking about we need to be willing to cross those cultural barriers, those language barriers, those barriers that keep people from associating one with another, and to be willing to go and reach those people. Maybe God's calling you today. Maybe he's been speaking to your heart for a while about the possibility of serving him in one way or another. Maybe God won't send you to the other part, the uttermost parts of the earth, but maybe it's right here in far Texas. But maybe God has something for you to do serving him here in this local church. But maybe God wants to send you elsewhere. But whatever it is, God wants to use you, wants to use you to reach people by the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel. Verses 29 to 30 read, That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. The reason that God 
chooses to use the foolish things of the world so we know that it's God that did it. That God gets glory. Does God get the glory for things in your life? Whatever it may be, whatever accomplishments you may have, is it to the glory of God? Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? Are you willing to say, Here am I, send me? Maybe here today, maybe you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because the Christian life doesn't exist if you don't know Christ as your Savior. If you, maybe, you have, maybe the gospel to you up until this day has been foolishness. Maybe today you're here and you've never said yes to Jesus Christ by faith. Now, I'm sure that Wally has used the hand gesture. You, you still use it, I suppose. Cette main représente Jésus, chacun de nous. Mon portefeuille représente nos péchés. Do you understand? Yes. If you've heard it before, right, this hand represents you and me, the wallet represents our sin. Pour aller au ciel, il faut être sans péché. Il faut être parfait. Il faut être sans péché. Mais nos péchés nous séparent avec Dieu. To go to heaven, you have to be without sin. But our sin separates us from God. En laissant l'autre main représenter Jésus-Christ qui ne vit pas de péché. Let, letting the other hand represent Jesus Christ who never sinned. Jésus-Christ est venu sur cette terre. Il a pris sur lui-même nos péchés pour que nous soyons justes. Jesus Christ came to this earth and he took upon himself our sin that we may be just, forgiven. Et si nous croyons en Jésus-Christ, il nous donne the pardon and la vie eternelle. If we believe in Jesus Christ, he gives us forgiveness and eternal life. Croyez-vous en Jésus-Christ? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Maybe this message to you is foolishness. And if it's foolishness to you, may, uh, that means you need it. If you hear this this morning, you say, all that, that's foolishness. That's because God wants to speak to your heart. Because, like it says, it's foolishness to those that perish. But if you've understood it, it's the power of God and the salvation. And each one of us has the responsibility of carrying that to every individual on the face of this earth. Wally.